Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. Another year has gone by, 2025 is now in the history books. The end of the year is always a great time for doing some self-reflection, so I want to look back at all the videos that I've published this year to reflect on everything that I did. As always, I've published quite a lot of stuff, lots of videos on all sorts of topics, a bunch of free courses, a bunch of asset reviews, I made a ton of tutorials, then a bunch of talking videos on a bunch of very interesting topics, really lots of stuff. It's honestly impressive to think how I've actually been doing this for over 7 years now. If you just found my channel recently, if so you can go watch these overview videos covering the overview of what I did on those years. I watched some of these in preparation for making this video and it's definitely quite a nice rundown memory lane. So up here for 2025, so first of all some nice stats. So in total I published 153 videos, I published 105 shorts and 3 free complete courses. So quite a lot, 153 videos, that is about 3 videos per week, yep that makes sense. Starting off with one of my favorite videos, this one right here. This is how one developer followed my Free Kitchen Chaos course and then they made a game and it was very very successful. This is really awesome, it's definitely one of the things that I love most, is when people follow my videos, follow my tutorials, my course and anything, and then they go ahead and find immense success making their own games. This one developer, they talked about their own journey and how, yep, they started pretty much as a complete beginner, they watched my Free Kitchen Chaos course, and by learning all the content in that course and then applying it to their own game, they managed to make some that was pretty successful. So you have this some that I always love to hear about, people learning from myself and then going on and finding tons of success. This is a video where I talked about something that I've wanted to do for literally many many years, and that is my Code Monkey Toolkit. I've wanted to make this asset for a real long time and I finally got the time to make it. It's a really nice collection of all sorts of utilities that I've built throughout the over a decade that I've been making games at this point. So in just one asset you contain over 40 tools and elements. This is also very important because it's something that I plan to keep updating over the years, pretty much until the end of time. So in early 2026 I definitely want to put out a bunch of free updates setting a bunch more tools and elements. Then I made a bunch of videos talking about all sorts of topics, and this one over here was quite interesting, basically talking about my journey and how I've made over a million dollars making my games. But the strategies that I've used whilst I was making my games, back in 2018, 2020 and so on, the strategies that I used back then, they would not necessarily work nowadays. So this is a very important video, it's very important for you to keep in mind the context when you're watching some kind of advice, specifically game marketing advice. The meta changes so quickly so things that were 10 years ago will not necessarily work nowadays. Then of course, something super important that always takes quite a lot of work but I love doing it, it's my free courses. So this year I put out 3 free courses. So at the beginning of the year I started off with the simple multiplayer game. This is a really nice course learning all about Netcode for game objects by learning how to make the simplest multiplayer game possible, literally just a tic-tac-toe game. So it's very simple which means it is perfect for learning how the API works and by learning the core concepts over here you can then apply them to literally any kind of game. This is a really nice 3 hour course so if you're interested in multiplayer games you can definitely watch this. Or for more advanced use cases I also made basically that exact same course making the exact same game but using Netcode for entities. This is their more advanced tool stack, it uses entities, it uses dots. So it is definitely not for complete beginners but it is super powerful if you want to make super fast paced multiplayer games. If so then this is the netcode stack you should be using. And this free course over here, this one is about 4 hours long and covers everything from the absolute basics until the final polish game. And relatively recently, just a few months ago, I finished my 2D beginner course. This is something that I've also wanted to make for a very long time. This is a 5.5 hour course learning how to make this really nice game. It was really cool, I definitely really enjoyed making this, it was very interesting, I built all kinds of interesting mechanics so it was quite fun. The entire course is 5.5 hours long and again the whole thing starts from completely scratch, like literally just an empty Unity project and teaching everything from the base of C Sharp, the base of Unity, going step by step until the final game. So this is another awesome one and I didn't have a free course that was targeted specifically towards 2D, so now I have, so if you want to learn how to make 2D games, definitely go ahead and watch this. So those were my 3 main free courses that I published this year. I definitely wish I could do more, but these courses take a ton of work to make. They take literally months to make a single course. So I wish I could do more, but it's really just not possible. And this year I also published another course that I've wanted to make for many years. My problem solving course. This is something that I've wanted to make for a very long time, teaching a very very useful, very valuable skill, but one that is very difficult to learn. So I had to think quite a lot, how exactly do I teach this super awesome skill? And I finally made it with this course that has a ton of practical problems for you to solve. Now as always I'm a big fan of free education. I try to make pretty much 90% of what I do completely for free. And on this course right now, this one is still in early access, I still have to finish about 5 or 10 lectures I think. So because of that right now it only has the premium version. But early next year I definitely want to figure out some way of make some kind of free version on this course. Maybe just the first third of the course, something like that. So that even people who have no money can learn this super valuable skill. And this year I also experiment with a bunch of YouTube shorts, trying to give out some quick bite sized pieces of advice in just 60 seconds. If you want you can go on the shorts page and see them all over here. But also made some simple compilation videos, so these three on the best game programming tips, the best marketing tips and the best Unity tips. So if you want quick bite sized advice definitely go ahead and watch these. Then another thing that I love doing but I can hardly find the time to do it are asset reviews. I hadn't done one in a few years. And this year I actually managed to do a bunch of them. I did one on the one asset that I generally believe you must have. This was a review on the asset inventory. 
absolutely excellent asset. This basically helps you manage the entire library of assets that you have. So if you're like me, if you have literally thousands of assets you have bought throughout the years, if so, this one over here, this one helps you very easily search through all of those packages. Like when you need some kind of a sword or some kind of pistol, you just search for that and search within all the packages you have and you can grab just one thing you need. So yeah, this is super, super useful. And basically the more assets you have, the more useful this is. So that is why I highly recommend to pretty much anyone, as long as you have more than a dozen asset packs, this is very useful. Then the asset review that I made on the mesh extractor. It's a real nice, very cheap, very simple tool that basically helps you grab mesh and remove pieces from it. So this one is really awesome, literally because of the title that I wrote. So this awesome tool helps multiply all of your assets. So every asset that you have, if you have, for example, an entire car that has the entire thing, but you just want the car door, you can use this in order to grab the car door, grab that as a mesh, separate it, and then do whatever you want to them. Then for speeding up compilation, Hot Reload is a great tool. And finally, a really awesome edited console that really makes the console be quite a bit more polished, quite a bit more useful. So yeah, these asset reviews were really nice to make. The SSR has literally thousands of assets at this point, and it's hard to know which ones are good, which ones are bad, and specifically, it's hard to know how exactly do you start using it, how hard are these to use. So personally, I do think these asset review videos, I think these are very useful, and I definitely intend to continue making them in 2026. Then on to Unity tutorials. This year, I didn't necessarily do as many standalone tutorials just because I spent quite a lot of time making all of those three massive courses, but I still did quite a few of them. First of all, it's something that I did relatively recently. It's this one, the free download for my project files. I basically just went ahead, I made a page on my website where I updated a bunch of project files from a ton of tutorials that I made throughout the years and updated them to 6.3. So nowadays you can download all of these, even these project files, these tutorials that were made back in 2019. The original project files, those had a bunch of errors, whereas now I've cleaned them all up. So you can go here, you can go to any of these videos, just click on them, select them, then download the project files, open them in Unity and everything works. This took quite a bit of work, so I do hope these help you quite a lot. Then I also made a general video on which Unity version you should use. This used to be very complex, whereas nowadays it is pretty simple, just use the latest supported or LTS version. So right now you should be using Unity 6.3. Then a really nice video talking about the best design patterns for game dev. There are so many design patterns that it's really hard to know which ones to use. Some of them are super useful in some cases and not so useful in others. So it does help to know at least the most regular ones, the most useful ones, just to know how to use them. There's basically no need for you to reinvent the wheel. So this is really useful and over here in this video I basically covered the most useful design patterns, the one that I use pretty much all the time. Then this video over here was really nice, a cheat sheet for boosting your games. I recently talked about a bunch of very practical things that you can do in order to improve performance in your games. Then this video over here, this was very interesting. Basically, someone sent me some code and I did a quick code review on it. I talked about all the things in that code that I would change and how the change would be better than what they had. It's definitely a fun format, definitely something that I would like to do quite a bit more. These videos are usually super technical, so they don't get too many views, but still, I very much would like to do a few more. Then this one over here was quite fun. A very hardcore tutorial on making a full stack application, in this case making a live chat. This is a very detailed 30 minute tutorial. It covers everything for how to make this live chat work, where I basically got a window directly inside Unity, and I've got an admin window in my browser, and I can basically send messages back and forth. Doing this involves writing all the code and building the window directly inside Unity. That involves writing a bunch of code on the PHP backend. It involves storing a bunch of messages using SQL and then showcasing them on a simple web page using JavaScript. So if this was a pretty fun full stack tutorial, then another one I really liked was this right here, how to break your desktop. It's a very simple, a very fun one, basically on how to make those games that were popular back in the early 2000s. Those games where you could basically destroy your desktop. I was able to have an entire window and really just blow the whole thing up. So yeah, very silly, very fun, very good. Then these two, Hangman and Fizzbuzz, these are two very nice practical beginner projects. These are really excellent beginner projects to basically help you get quite a bit more experience. These are classic problems. They are beginner projects, but they still require quite a bit of knowledge. So if you are a beginner, I highly recommend you go through these projects. They might seem overly simple, but making this, this will definitely help level up your skills by quite a bit. The Hangman Project, this is a classic game. And then Fizzbuzz, this is a classic interview question. So it definitely helps to know how to do this. Then if you're interested in AI, I also did a fully detailed tutorial on getting started with Unity AI. This is not just one tool, but actually quite a lot of them. It's an entire collection of tools that exist inside Unity. So this is a very detailed video. It's 47 minutes long. This covers the assistant, the sprite generator, texture generator, sound generator, animations, inference engine, developer data framework, and a bunch more stuff. So if you want to experiment adding AI to your workflow, definitely go ahead and watch this video. Then a very important video was also this one, the top 10 best game dev beginner projects. Like I said, experience is really crucial. And the more projects you make, the easier it becomes. And when you're a beginner, you really shouldn't be trying to think about unique games that you can make. Instead, you should be thinking exactly like this. What are some nice game dev beginner projects you can make? Something where basically the game design is already done, and you can really just focus on the technical implementation. And for those, these are my recommendations. So Flightbird, Arknoid, Snake, these are all really great games that are perfect for beginners, but despite being simple games, they will still teach you quite a lot. Then I made a video talking about differences between UI Toolkit and UntyY. I made one talking about the multiplayer play mode. 
This is a really excellent tool for making multiplayer games. It really speeds up things. I made a video talking about the best systems to build if you want to master programming. Again, goes back to the same thing. Experience is really key. And if you build these five systems that I covered in this video, you will gain quite a lot of knowledge. The other fun one was this one, my tech stack as a game dev, YouTuber, and web dev. Here I talked about all the tools, all the programs that I use in order to make my games, both my games, these videos, courses, whatever. So if you're curious to know what programs do I use, definitely go ahead and watch this. And then a really fun one was this one. This is the April Fool's video. It's very silly, but it is an actual tutorial. So if you want to learn how to make pen tricks, then go ahead and watch this video. Next thing that I've been doing for over two years now is the Game Dev Report newsletter. This is my newsletter that I publish every single week. I've been doing this for two years, I think. I think I'm up to 90 issues by now. I cover all kinds of interesting topics. Like 19,000 games were published on Steam this year and most made zero. Talked about the number one game marketing rule and a whole bunch of stuff. And sometimes for the more interesting articles, I tend to convert them into videos. So for example, there was a really interesting story on the game Cuffbust, how it had a 100k wishlist and actually managed to flop. This was a very sad story, but also a very good cautionary tale, so you don't make the mistakes that this dev made. And speaking of mistakes was also this one, when in developer made $4 million, that's an insane success, but then through mismanagement, through all kinds of things, it went broke. Again, these are very important cautionary tales. That way you know, if you do find success, then according to this game, definitely don't overexpand and hire two dozen people because then you have an insane burn rate and $4 million might seem like quite a lot, but if you've got a team of 20 people, that can easily go away. For something more positive, do gamers recognize asset packs? And the answer is nope, they do not. Even if you use Cindy assets, which are definitely very recognizable, players for the most part, they really just want fun games to play. It doesn't matter what asset you use. So over here in this video, I talk about a bunch of examples from a bunch of games that do use assets very clearly, and yet they do find success because again, the players really just want fun games to play. So as long as the game is fun, they really don't care what assets you use. Another fun video was this one over here. So the problem with making more money with assets than games. This is definitely a fun problem to have. Some developers, they start off making games, but making games is very, very difficult. And in turn, they start making tools to make their games. And then they just make those tools available on the asset store. And sometimes those tools, they make quite a lot more money than the games themselves. So this is a fun video because talking about that discussion and how making games is not the only path. Making tools, being a tools developer, that is also an equally valid path. So if you want to be a game developer, you can make games, obviously, that's the obvious approach, but you can also make tools for other developers to make games. That is also a viable path. Then this one over here was also quite a fun topic. So what do the best programmers do differently? It definitely helps to analyze people who are very good at some craft, in this case, programming, and see what exactly do those people do? What makes them so good? So if you yourself want to be good, chances are you should emulate at least some of those things. Another fun one was where I talked about an exercise on game polish. So this one over here, I basically talked about a game that looked insanely well polished and basically did a quick exercise on looking at this scene and trying to break it down piece by piece, try to see why does this one seem so satisfying? Why is this one so good? Trying to analyze all the individual pieces that make up the final thing. So you yourself can apply those pieces to your games to make your games feel much more satisfying. This is definitely a fun exercise and I definitely recommend you do this. And if you're curious as to how do I find all the articles, all the stuff that I write about in my newsletter, if so, I covered it in this video. I covered the very source that I check in order to find the articles. And then I also made a bunch of miscellaneous videos on all kinds of topics. For example, this fun one talking about my birthdays. It's definitely a fun video. So it's been 12 years since I published my first team game, 7 years since I first started this channel, and 1 year since I started the newsletter. One game that found tons of success this year was Supermarket Simulator. So in this video over here, I tried to analyze why was this game so successful? I played the game for a little bit. And over here in this video, I basically talked about my experience on why I think this game was so successful. The answer is because pretty much every single tiny interaction feels so satisfying. Another game that was super successful this year was Schedule 1. And there were some people that were calling this game a low effort game. So in this video, I talked about how despite the game having low poly graphics, that does not mean that it is low effort. Games with very low poly visuals, like for example Minecraft, they can definitely be high effort games that players love. And speaking of that genre, the shop simulator genre that was super hot throughout this entire year, I made this nice video. I made the most profitable game as a test. These shop simulator games, there are tons of them and they all find a ton of success. They've made millions upon millions of dollars. So I basically just used my own CodeMonkey toolkit asset. I used a bunch of tools from the toolkit and really just made a super quick shop simulator prototype. So I can suck shelves, I can add a bunch of items, I can change their price. I can go to the checkout, some customers come in, they buy some stuff, they go away. So it was fun to make a super quick prototype. I think it took me like a week or less than that to make this, so it was quite fun. Then another very important one was this one on the biggest problem in game dev. This is talking about the door problem. And if you don't know what is the door problem, definitely watch this video. It is a very important, very common problem that seems super simple on the surface, but in reality, it is actually very, very difficult. It's all about just how difficult game design is because every single game design question has a billion possible answers. Then I also talked about the Unity roadmap for 2026 and beyond. I talked about Unity 6.3 LTS. 
how this one is released and this one is the version that you should be using nowadays. I talked about the timeless question of how much your time is worth, how you always have to spend something in order to build something, either you spend your time or your money and it's up to you to choose which one which. In terms of marketing, I made a nice video with Chris Zukowski talking about the top Steam tips for 2025. I wrote some very practical advice on how exactly do you refactor code. This is a very important part of the programming process. Code is not meant to be solid, it's not meant to be fixed, it's meant to be malleable so you can change it over time. And this over here, I talked about my process for doing that, for how do I refactor my code to make sure it stays as high quality as possible. Then a video on another fun exercise, some more optimization, our own tutorials obsolete, and a bunch more stuff. And then my usual tool list. So I do the top new Unity games and top new assets every single month. I've been making these videos every single month for pretty much four or five years, I think, at this point. It's definitely for quite a lot. It is quite fun for me to basically research, see all the top new games that come out every single month and try to pick 10 really interesting ones. And every single month, it is always super tricky to pick just 10 games. There's always at least like 20 or 30 games that I would love to pick, but I limit myself to just 10. So it's always amazing to see all the awesome stuff that developers make every single month. And same thing on the top new assets. I browse the asset store every single month. There's always hundreds of stuff coming out every single month. So it's really interesting to find a bunch of really nice gems hidden amongst all that mountain stuff. And yep, those are my highlights for 2025. Definitely quite a lot of stuff. Again, 150 videos. That's three videos per week. That is quite a lot of stuff. I'm definitely very happy with myself with what I was able to build this year. Like I said, if you just found my channel recently, if so, you can go ahead and watch the recap videos for the previous years. You can see the one, for example, in 2020 and see how much things have changed from back then to now. But yep, I'm really happy with how my 2025 came out. I also really hope that you yourself had a very successful 2025 and I wish you the best of luck in 2026. All right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.